This is just one of the many glorious things that I found on the internet. And because it's a little before seven, I think while we're before I show off my game, let's find a few other games. So, my the mileage varies when it comes to actually finding stuff on here. I'll just show you. This is how you would typically get games. Receive online or receive locally. When we go online, you have to put in a code. So, like, you actually have to go out of your way. Unfortunately, there's no, like, level game interface. Nothing like in Dreams or other software out there where you can, like, search for games and all that. Thankfully, like, I, there's a couple places out on the internet that will do the searching for you. And honestly, my, one of my favorite things to do is if you're if you're a Steven Play friend or a Steven Play fan, you're probably already familiar with the Morning Mario series. Well, there's a spinoff for of it starting up next week actually, in relation to Game Builder Garage. So like that whole list of games that I had on my catalog over, that we saw a little bit ago. I mean, mine is like three of them. They're all stuff that I found just basically like going for the level rating process on the Game Builder Garage version of that Morning Mario show. So, if you're curious, is G is GGG or let me start over. Is GGGrandpa.com and go to Grandpa's Game Garage. Uh, works like you can either submit levels or rate a level. You hit the button and the system should randomly give you one submitted levels to go through. And after you play it, you can rate it from one to five stars. And the high, highest ranking levels are gonna get featured on the show when it starts next week. So when I say next week, I mean Monday, so it's gonna, as a fan of Mori Mario, I'm really looking forward to it, especially because I've been fiddling around with it in my own time, not as much as I would have liked. I would have liked to actually like make more levels, but I'm still honestly going for the lessons. So I made like one game, kind of formatting off one of the previous lessons, but it's vast, probably it's vastly different, even though like I used one of the tutorial games as a template. So there's that, and then the three tutorials that I've gone through, I'm just about to work my way towards the tutorial that comes to making a 2D platformer. I mean, depending on how the stream goes, maybe I'll just do that, because the game I made is actually is kind of short, it's kind of just an endless arcade. Game terms in the 80s. I was, okay, it's kind of getting worried about the game, because I've been so excited for this new show that I've kind of been a little getting a little carried away with actually rating stuff. Hey Archie, yeah, I'm doing all right so far. It's kind of been on and off, but part of the reason why I'm streaming is because I'm feeling a little better at the moment. You know, <laughs> sorry if I only just now know this. I kind of just I haven't had the chat. I haven't had my chat window up like I should. But that should hopefully be alleviated now. Alright. So, okay. I guess there is some lessons going on here. But at least you got the, your basic jump. And it looks like it's going to be a 3D platformer that's just revolving around jumping and all that. And our main objective is to get these 15 turnips. Do you do anything? Uh, nope. Hmm. I'm sure we'll figure out a way to get up there eventually. Yeah, like, I am. I didn't mean to, like, come off too mopey on Twitter lately. But I kind of just been feeling. Maybe it's just as simple as getting a little more sleep. I've been kind of feeling a little tired, I don't know. And hey, Albert, welcome. You're just in time. I think I'm gonna, like, get one or two randomly generated levels off. Or 
ra randomly submitted levels off the site that I'm using just to warm up and then we'll showcase the game I made and we'll go from there. So hope you enjoy the show. In the meantime, our main objective in this particular game is to find the 15 turnips. And that is what I'm working my way towards right here and now. I thought I had things figured out with getting up there. But maybe not quite. Hmm. I'll come back to that later. Looks like I can probably navigate my way around here though. So that's probably a better start than any. Oh. So... Um... I'm not... Sure. I was a little on the fence whether to like take viewer submitted levels. But I guess I could do one or two just to even things out. I, I just don't want it to be the focus of the stream. But then again, I guess it would be a little unfair if it was just focused all around me. For right now, though... Hmm. Oh, I, I got an idea. I'm not sure if it'll work. Nah, I mean, that... Get, that gets one of the two turnips that I'm looking for. Hey, Rock Eddie, welcome. Again. <laughs> How's everything going on with all of you? I think I, rec I recognize a few Pokemon Go faces on there, so if you all have like any stories of how you've been doing with the game, feel free to let me know and we'll share our experiences while I'm trying to find these freaking turnips. <laughs> I didn't, I unfortunately didn't have as much of a Pokemon Go excursion today as I would have liked. But I mean, like, it was an overall nice day. Like, I, it was a bit. I'm a little heat sensitive, so I didn't, like, have too much time to go and walk in there. Okay. I see your code there. So I'll just copy and, like, maybe I'll just store it in my chat room for right now so I don't forget about it. And I think that'll be, like, the one viewer submitted level you today. I, I, I can't figure out what to do about that turn up. I think I'm just gonna have to come back to it later. Still shine hunting Regigigas. That's sweet. Like, I was on the fence. Like, I was really just gonna pass out, pass by Regigigas, because, like, I already got two from the two times that I was in the x rays. But then I saw that shine, and I'm like, ah, if I'm out, I might as well use my free passes if I'm out. Just use about 15k Stardust on you're prepping for Ultra League and now you're broken on Stardust. I'm not surprised. I wonder if that what that dude's about. Kind of makes me feel like these are interactable buttons, but I wouldn't be surprised if they weren't. Took 25 Reggie Gigas to get a shiny. Nice. That seems like good odds to me. I know it's like if we're going purely by the numbers, if, from what I remember, it's a little above Oz, but not much. Yeah, maybe that's the issue I've been having with Ultra League lately, but I do have a couple XL King Pokemon, I, and I did use them once, I just... One of them's an Umbreon and I'm still working on powering up, because I still need a little XL candy for that, and the other is Talonflame, which, like, I need to have as my best buddy, and I just wasn't feeling like messing around with my best buddy lately, so I guess those are two factors that could have been in play. There's, it really feels like I'm overlooking something obvious that last turn up. Yeah, might as well go over here and take another look. Yeah, like, I guess then it's like, I enjoyed Ultra League last season, and it's kind of a similar boat of just, like... Feels like people with Pokemon that are powered up with Candy XL have such a huge advantage over others. That was a problem last season with Ultra League, and I was okay with it. But then again, like, I just freshly... That was right when I made, quote-unquote, made the Umbreon, the Tail and Flame. So I guess they were still new and people were still adjusting to them to the point where, like, I, even though I didn't finish maxing out the Umbreon, it was still serving me fairly well. And plus, I'm my best buddy too, so it, that kind of maybe like saved a little. That's in the process. Yeah, 
Of course it's just a silly wall jump like that. Now, I was keeping, I probably should have been keeping track of how many turnips I got. But it's fine, I'll just skim around here real quick and take another look afterwards. I don't know if I, if the sentence even got out of my mouth. Oh, I think this is a calendar. And if that's the case, there's just one turnip hanging out around here. But yeah, oh. I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh yeah, like, I, I really feel bad because I wanted to showcase... I had some pretty fun Great League teams that I made for this season. But just because, like, I always felt crummy right... Right during the time frames I would have to record, it's always a situation where I wasn't able to do any. I wasn't, I wasn't able to record before it swapped over to Ultra League just because of unfortunate timing. Plus, it seemed like people were salty about Great League this season, so that made me feel a little more iffy about streaming it. On top of that, okay. Now, let me try out that viewer submitted level before I get angry. Oh yeah, I might as well vote. I might as well do the GGG vote while I'm here. That was a pretty solid level. I think I'll give... Uh, I, I'm gonna bite my tongue because I don't want to, like, come up... I don't want to, like, actually reveal what I rate things. There's no harm in it, but, like, in case someone stumbles upon the video, I don't want them to feel like better words because I kind of have my standards high for these series just because I know, like, there's some... Watching Mori Mario for so long, there's some high-quality stuff that comes out of it. So that alone puts my standards a little high. But I'm trying to be more generous with Game Builder Garage just because it is a lot more open. Okay, good. It's like, I guess it's a good thing to chat wasn't scrolling too much because apparently my copy and paste wasn't working and I was missing a letter. But I can just scroll back real fast and get your message, Alberto, if you're still here. And now I see why I wasn't submitting or like taking suggestions from the chat. I, I'll give it a try. It's, maybe it's not as bad as it looks. Well, that's good, Alberto. I got your level. I got your level to more degree than I may have wanted. Okay, it's just a it's just a silly name. Gameplay itself doesn't seem too bad, so I'm not gonna keep getting fixated on it. I like that feel safe, but just like, if it gets stuck, just fling it up in the air to try to assure that it doesn't stay stuck. Eh, no. Good problem solving. So yeah, this was the level from Alberto? Not really... Hmm, maybe he's freaking out because of the teleporter. Oh, it's spinning to get into the hole. Yeah. Eh, it's a little convoluted, but I think, I can, I think I'll figure it out. Sorry, I'm just taking things in. Taking them to my deathbed, apparently. Yeah. I'm not sure if you're looking for feedback on things. So I'm just gonna say before you say no. I'm gonna say before you say no. If you can find a way to telegraph that whole spinning part, I think that would help players a lot. Actually understand the level better. It's a fun idea, but it's a little complicated. I can't believe I went there twice. But hey, I mean, once you figure out what you're supposed to do, it doesn't seem that difficult to replicate. Okay, cool. I just can't... So, apparently, it took me three times, but I figured out what the red paint, quote-unquote, paint area does. Yeah, making a ground bouncing seems like a good, better alternative. Because I don't see how anyone would figure this out on its own, on their own. Oh, 
Okay, what? I'm asking this hypothetically. I went through that area like three times without <laughs> dying, but now all of a sudden I'm just like, oh hey, let's get stuck in that corner all the time. I, yeah, you could do that too. It's a little. I personally like the bouncing idea more because it. I'm, I might geek out about game design a little bit. But it's a little more intuitive to the player to actually, like... I think, like, the, your, the second idea was a little more less convoluted. Do you actually get... Good question. I don't think... It definitely hasn't happened for a while. But I definitely know those, those types of people. Or those types of accounts. I, I think the only thing, thing you can really do is just, like, block them. Yeah. Don't follow through with them. Your your gut is right assuming that they're sketchy. I can tell you that much. And like even if it was even if it was legit, it's not gonna do you too much good in the long run, cause like ro they're what it is is that they they're bots. Like they're bot programs that get your viewers through bot that like make bot accounts to watch the things. But that doesn't actually help you grow in Twitch. Especially because, like, Twitch actually cares about... The views would probably be a temporary thing at most, and even if it's not, like... There's other things that Twitch looks out for besides just pure views. So if you're actually expecting growth on Twitch, it's not really going to do you too much good. Yeah. <sighs> that is a tight squeeze. I see how the... Trying to go through with challenge in that, but, like... If you watch closely, if I'm, unless I, unless I do direct left and right, the character curves around a little bit, making those tight turns a little bit too tight to work around with. And even when I am trying to turn as tightly as possible, you can kind of see how it kind of goes more at a circle than a direct left or a right. So... If it was me, I would make those areas a little less narrow to try to keep the, to keep the challenge of navigating while making it more fair. Yeah, see, like you can go through at an angle. Yeah, I mean, I think that. I thought that's what I was doing, but let me reach that point again and actually pay attention to how I'm, the exact movements I'm going through with it. Like, is that... Like, this area where you can clearly go at an angle? That's fine. Okay, I think you can kind of see what you're going for there. Hmm. He's still a little narrow in my opinion, but I can at least see where you're going from. Also, if I'm getting... So it's like, let me know if I'm getting too nitpicky, but like, if you want to make it a little better, you could like make the breakable blocks something besides orange. It just looks too similar to the red. I was able to figure it out just fine, but I could imagine other people not catching on as quickly. Alright. Sorry. I mean, it is, it is tight enough navigation that I have to actually focus. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd make dumb movement options like that. And now, we gotta backtrack all the way over here. Now... Well, that was quite a bounce. Now, I gotta, I gotta actually play more with Game Maker Garage and figure out just how difficult checkpoints are as a system because I feel like a lot of the games I play not just this one could benefit from a checkpoint like system but I guess I'm just like it's something it's not just it's something I get caught up in in game design in games in general not just like custom made games are all levels of it um good question um I see, I see your point, like, because you, your block is bright neon yellow. The blocks, the destructible blocks are red. 
Um, um first flower is like a green, like that, because that would be a color that doesn't contrast with the background, but still similar, or still different enough. And like, it's not as bad if the block is a similar color to the character, but the blue and green are different. I get, again, it's just a neck pick, and I picked up on it just fine. That's what it is. Anyways. So, this is the, this is the game I made here. Boulder Dango. We could, since we got people here, we could, we could either play that, or I could go through, through the game garage site and get another randomly generated level. Actually, so, for clarification, we, I can either like pick a couple of the games I found on here and showcase them, we could get another game from that site, or we could, sh or I could showcase my game. If anyone has any opinions, or let me know now. In the meantime, maybe I'll at least get a code. Just in case. And we can watch this thing. I, I don't know what it is. A <laughs> this is what I led the stream off on. I don't know what it is. It's so simple. Yet there's something appealing about it. Yeah. Plus, it just made a good, like, intermission thing just while I was getting set up. Yeah. I think I'm gonna actually do it. Let's show off Boldango. I think it's <laughs> the pronunciation of it. It's just a combination of Boulder, Danger, and Volcano. So, it's an endless. It's like an endless runner. For. <laughs> Lack of a better way to describe it. And you just have to try to survive as long as you can. And your main objective is just to try to get that number as high as you can. You gotta make you successfully figure out how to make a 3D game without the tutorial. Nice. That said, if you got the time, I wouldn't mind. I would still recommend checking out the tutorial. Like there's probably some because like it the tutorials aren't exactly just spelling out exactly how to make a game. It's so it's just it's more so the game's way to introduce all the nodes and mechanics within it. So like an example, the spaceship tutorial actually taught me how to make custom sprites. And I've seen a lot of people who like submit games and all that have like colorful sprites. I I can think of like a couple really silly examples that I can showcase after this. <laughs> Yeah, it, just, it really fits the theme for what it's going for right now. <laughs> Hello, surprise fuzzball. <laughs> so this game has like two Easter eggs, and the fuzzball is one of them. And they're all they're both based on just like reaching a certain time frame in the game itself. Now I haven't like it's bif like I I would say it's specifically designed it to have technical moments, but. I, that would be giving myself too much credit. More so like I discovered technical things you could do with it, and just as I was building it up, built it around that. Like wall jumping is like a weird, it's kind of weird, no one actually talks about it. At least in the game from what I've seen. But like built into the game is the whole wall jumping thing. I don't even think there's a way to turn it off, so if you have a game that's a platformer, or just a game that where the character can jump, it's automatically built in. And you just jump against the wall, and you bounce off it. And like, I think another thing that I can know about this is, this is not randomly generated. Like, the, the chaotic nature of the balls, it, it can, it's a little secret, but it can be, it can be predicted because I didn't use any random numbers to actually influence this at all. It just seems so chaotic because I have like spawners slightly off screen 
they tilt at different angles, and I do have some, like, timers to, like, fluctuate around when they pop up and when they don't. Or... And that, between that and giving the balls a bouncing nature and having, like, some break and others, like, bounce off other balls, and all those factors together are just what are, is what gives it the chaotic nature of it all. The music helps too. <laughs> Well, pfft. that's on my end. I'm gonna just spoil right now. The second Easter egg is actually like a victory, quote unquote victory. It is endless, so you can continue playing after the 15, or I should say the 50 second mark. But you get like a little congratulatory thing as you're just trying to stay alive for your life. If you can survive for 50 seconds, and it's it's tough to survive that long, like. I, my personal record, and mind you, like, I probably played this game more than anyone else, is like 65 seconds. And that only happened like a few days ago. Like, when I first submitted this level, I, I could just barely survive 50 seconds. I'm, try, I'm trying to think if there was something else involved with it. Yeah, there's you just a lot of and a lot of surviving 50 seconds. <laughs> it's just knowing where to stay at the right time. Like, I'm not sure how many people are gonna pick up on that, but the yellow, like a lot of there was a lot of play testing, obviously as I was going through it, and I just kept adjusting the the boulder slash balls as we go along, as I was playing along to try to like either make it more fair or like if I found like an area that would was too easy to stick around with, I would mess around with that stuff a little more. Specifically a good example is the yellow, the yellow boulders, I just call them by their actual names. The yellow boulders are actually called cheese balls, or like, they're more like cheese boulders than cheese balls, but they're cheese balls because in my original run with the playtesting, you could stand on this specific platform for like the majority of the 50 seconds, if not longer, with no consequence. So I specifically added a boulder spawner to pop up around 20 seconds to shoot a ball to make you move so you can't stand there the whole time. And that's why I decided to dub the yellow boulders cheese balls. Because they keep you from, their balls are specifically made for cheesing, keeping you from cheesing it out. Yeah, I think like, the one that comes up around 40 seconds? <sighs> What's another one where, like, I found a place to stand after the 20 seconds and I want to make sure I didn't keep standing there? So I just add another cheese ball spawner in that lower corner around the 40 second mark. I'll give this a couple more tries just to see if we can get up to 40 seconds. I'm surprised I'm able to do so as well as I am while talking in the process. Yeah. One more time. There's like a couple more things I want to talk about anyways. That bol that balloon up in the upper left, it used to be a little bit higher. And there's actually a version of this game that has the balloon in its original spot. And unfortunately, it was the one I submitted over the Grandpa's Gaming Garage. But it was up there for so long, I didn't want to remove it. So, there's a version of this game out there. Where that yellow balloon, you could just stand up there for like... At least 40 seconds of the whole game. And... Ugh. You could cheese it out, even with the cheese balls, was the point. You should play some of the new game submissions. Now, I mean, I'll take a look at, like, unfortunately there's not a way within the game itself to actually... ...search for games, like I said, but I can, like, go for the Morning Mario thing again. I guess what I'm thinking, though, I wanted to show some examples of sprites. They found in the process. 
It's for some pretty fun stuff that they made. Where is where's I don't know. Do I want to show that game or do I want to show? Oh, there they both are. I don't know. There's Linko's crazy in town. Quest for Cheerios. Ditto assault. They're all beautiful in a special in in the funny bone way. There's like there's some legit good stuff. Joe's quest for Cheerios. <laughs> Now, like, this one's not really too much like This one's not really too much of the game, but it does show you what I mean about the sprite work. I think my favorite thing about this game is what happens when we die. Let's see if I can... how far I can get. Beautiful! It's... it's art. It's its own special kind of art, that Toad Scream. How come I don't, I don't remember it being that tricky before? And that's like the trickiest part. And there's the Cheerio, and <laughs> that's that's it. That's the game. You know, I can probably like just quickly show all of them real quick. Where was the where was the Zelda one? Link goes crazy in town. Good question, Alberto. I'm still trying to figure out myself how to... There's probably, like, some option in Game Builder Garage to add in, like, custom sound effects. I have not figured out where, the, where that is. Like, I... Like, even Link sound effects here, I kind of got a feeling are custom. But I'm not sure where it would be... I think my favorite part about this game is just all the little details they have, like the shopkeeper getting mad, like there's a lady, lady before that if we stab her she screams. <laughs> Even he makes weird noises. And the cuckoo. The cuckoo does exactly what you think it does. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you could actually destroy them. That kind of defeats the purpose of the cuckoos. <laughs> But yeah, like, it's a simple game with just, like, a lot of funny little details. And look at the coding that went behind it. You know what? Let's see if we can get down to the mystery of how Toad Screaming comes into play. Because, like, any game you download, you can actually, like, look at the code. You can't edit it, but hypothetically you could, like, copy and paste it. Or, like, make a new version. Problem is, this is a lot easier to do in handheld, because I can just like touch screen around. There's probably like a node somewhere related to object destroy or something, and you could probably look it up from there. Oh, that's right. This game has mouse controls. I'm not sure if I have a spare mouse. I I, I wasn't planning on getting that deep. If I actually get into building. Is Toad really just a box? A moving box? Let's see. System sound, reward. We will find the secret of Toad, though. Sound, Mary. Oh, that's what I mean. I would like take the USB mouse and plug it into the switch, but funny crunch. This sounds right. Yeah, this is definitely it's gotta be hidden here somewhere, cause that's the end game. Oh no, that's that's when we reach the end. Here we go. This is more obvious. That's the person module. So, one of these has the secret behind Toad Scream. Scream female? I find it hard to believe that it's just a... I 
guess it's just a female scream. I guess that's all there is to it. I mean, we can, like... Yeah. It might take a little bit of fiddling, but... <laughs> Scream female. That's beautiful. I can't believe that's a default sound effect in the game. Probably can just make it quick person. We're gonna make our own tilt. We're gonna make our own screaming tilt. Just gotta get a button. Node. Actually, I probably don't even need to do that. I, we could probably make it simpler. Just play sound, sound effect. If press play. Sound effect. Person. Probably in the wrong setting. No, that should be it. People, voices. There it is. It's green female. <laughs> Can't believe it's that simple. What the heck did I do to the sound effects? <laughs> All we're missing is a sprite, which I almost think is a terrible idea to do without set setting up a mouse, which is all the more reason <laughs> inclined for me to do it. Right. I just learned about where this witch is this fancy object. Making it the A button was a mistake. <laughs> you all have the patience of saints. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> This is a this is a random told off memory and <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying it. Cause I can't help but live in fear of the monstrosity that I've created. I can yeah. You know what, even if I had my tablet plugged into... Would it work? Would my tablet work? It's technically a mouse. Okay, for everyone's sanity though, it's, it's a sloppy toad, but... <laughs> I don't think anyone with the right frame of mind 
should have to put up with this any longer. No, that's a toad. I'm glad you are on board with this. This was not what I had intended. But we're gonna we'll roll with it. <laughs> okay, I think that's enough. Technically is a game. Well, I mean, I guess without getting philosophical, I is I technically is a game within the parameters of what this game considers a game. <laughs> All right. I thought there was there was one more that made good use of sprites I wanted to show. This one is just this one's dumb. But in the good way. It's got a simple objective too. You just throw Pokeballs at the Diddles to quote unquote catch them and totally not destroy them. You gotta watch out for the shiny Diddles because for some reason blue Diddles kill you like that. I guess like because I guess the Diddles became self-aware of just how valuable they are when they're shiny, and they use that to their knowledge. Like it somehow gives them the ability to make people blow up. Whatever it it makes it it makes the video game a video game, so we just gotta let it slide. <laughs> the collision, as you may be able to tell, is a bit wonky, but there's a just a art of appreciation for. Oh wait 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 wait. I have the family friendly tag off, right? <laughs> there was just, uh, maybe it's just my imagination. There was just something weird about the one time I threw the Pokeball. No, okay, it's coming from his hands, I just wasn't paying enough attention and it looked like it was coming out from somewhere else. Yeah, it's not even worth trying to get 20, but I don't remember it being this hard, so I'll, I'll, I feel like as long as I give it an honest, I should at least give it an honest try. Oh, there it is again. Please don't kill me, Mr. Blue Ditto! <laughs> I feel like I need to focus just because I don't want to be made a fool. I shouldn't have to focus, and the fact that I feel like I need to focus when the whole point of streaming is to talk while playing makes me feel like I'm already a failure at this game. But we can make a rambling away, and I can like look at chat for excuses. I can make excuses for days if I really want to. <laughs> Isn't this the perfect Pokemon game, though? I don't... Can you remember the last time we got a piece of arc related to the Pokemon Company in this form? <laughs> I can't. Alright. Now I feel bad just showing off all the Mimi games. So let me see if, if I can find the best legit game in the mix. Like, I wouldn't say it's this, but I think it's pretty cool just how well they managed to replicate the Game & Watch Mini game. You can play the touch screen control games in dock with a mouse. Oh, that's right. I kind of I, like again. I need to spend more time exploring the game creation mechanic. I kind of forgot that there was options to do touch screen controls. I probably glance. I probably knew because I glanced, but haven't had a chance to play around with it. But yeah, using a mouse for touch screen stuff would be a good way to be able to play full screen without sacrificing the. No, the the non-handheld molds. Yeah, this just goes on forever. I was just, I I actually just wanted to pull it up to stall for talking for time while I try to think of what which one to do. I like this one, but it's it's hard in ways that it shouldn't be hard. Maybe we can come back to it. I can show this. This is a really cool teaser. They prat. Uh, the instructions are supposed to get. Oh yeah, the instructions get destroyed as you do them. 
Yeah, they basically recreated Doom. In Game Maker Garage. And it's just insane. Like, these weapons actually do different things. The shotgun... ...shoots differently than the spread gun. And compared to the machine gun. I... I think it's just amazing how much they put into it. So you have people using touchscreens or mouse to punch. Yeah, that's an nice idea. Like, I would... I would assume that you at least would mention that you use touchscreens to get control on that, but... Alright. Alright, where... Where is the best thing I've seen so far? Like, this is cool, but... I mean, I have a soft- for some reason I have a soft place in my heart for this one. It's basically a balloon trip. I think it's the cube's face that really sells it, though. The music helps, too. I'm not gonna go for the whole thing, but I wanted you to at least, like, see the starts of it. And again, like, I found all these just... Well, going through the level raider part of Grandpa's Game Garage, I believe is the name of the site. I think this is one of the earlier ones I found, and it's pretty. I want to say it's basic, and I like it, but like if this is templated off, any anything. It definitely doesn't look like it. I don't know, I just like the games that have... that kind of get their point across relatively simple. Like, oh, for a second there I thought I lost <laughs> the robot to the ground there. Yeah, <laughs> which makes the, the noise too. For some reason, I thought it was different from the. There's the toad voice! Uh, now that I realize that it's just a female voice, I cannot unhear toad whenever I hear it. Oh my god. I guess toad decided to join the cheerleader squad. This one's just like a recreation of... Well, I guess the most recent game in the format is Friday Night Funkin', but there's others too. Um, ah, might as well. I, at least I can at least show what I like and what I don't like about it. I guess for one, it was the first 3D platformer I found. So I, that alone sells it. But I think it's kind of neat how they like... Oh, oof. There's the one thing I don't like about it. You die, it's just all over, and this level goes pretty deep, so like you... And the controls feel a bit sloppy too. Or so it's just like, it feel... Let me just go to the dreaded wall jumping section and just show you what I mean. Thankfully the game has like an optional. And like there's more than six apples around, but there's a... Red Yoshi later on that like requests all the apples and I'm just so stubborn that I haven't even like bothered to check what it's normally. So you got this wall jumping section and normally I'm better at it than I'm showing here but it's just so easy to get t turned lopsided and just wall jump right off the freaking pair of columns. Especially because that's not even the end of it. Um, maybe, maybe it's the pro controller compared to like the handheld but this feels like it's going a lot smoother than most of the times what is somehow it's going worse yet better say it's nuts oh you have well I mean these have been sitting around for a while so I'm not too not too shocked if any if I ain't caught 
I think every all the ones I have saved here are all ones that I at least thought were neat. So if you saw any on that screen that looked interesting to you, let me know them. Check them out. I kind of just wanted to like mention the controls of that there. It's worth knowing that this game has only been out for like hasn't even been out for a week yet, so I'm not surprised that there's a little bit of correlation. You like the invisible platform idea. Oh hey! Remember when we were just talking about bots that try to sell followers? Goodbye! That's a live demonstration of how to take care of bots that try to sell you followers. I'm just gonna briefly show, like, because you can kind of get the idea of this real quickly. You shield to block the attack, and use the sword to attack. It's kind of neat. Now, before I forget, I have, like, this level code from... from the site just sitting here. I don't want to forget about it and not... Not actually bold on it. So we're gonna get that real quick. I'm actually kind of surprised how much time I actually spent just sitting around on the levels that I already had saved. Like I... Oh, okay, yeah, this kind of is a thing that happens every now and then. Let me just double check to make sure that I got it right. Yeah, that looks correct. I'm making a 3D game based on one of my Switch games. Amazing. Nice. I should say. Yeah, I'm... Like, I'm really trying... I think once I actually, like, get a little more familiar with the system, I wouldn't mind trying to make a simple... At least a simple 2D platformer. And depending on how the templates are... Or how the tutorial goes, I might... Like take away me from that and try to expand on it, expand on the 3D game one to try to make its own platform. And apologies, while I'm putting in these codes, I actually have another window for the site, so I can't quite see the chat. But I'll be sure to check as soon as I'm done putting it in. It's just like when I have a TV monitor, I'm working off one monitor. Instead of the t typical two that I have, because one of my monitors is just literally the TV screen for the game. Yeah, this one's this one's new, for me at least. Oh, is it just literal dodging? Oh my! Don't don't rotate! Don't rotate towards me! How am I supposed to avoid you if you're just gonna just keep following me and hide from my hook cover? It's hard to think of ideas for 2D platforms. Interesting. Uh, I haven't tried it yet. I would just assume that it's harder to make something for a 3D platformer than a 2D platformer, because I would assume that, sim that 2D platformers are more simple, if only because of less dimensions to worry about. Uh, I think this is cool, but it might be a little bit difficult. Yeah, we're not even, like, exploring the whole isometric platform thing. Oh, I had an attack button this whole time. And this is why games need to explain their controls. This is why, like, having text to explain things in your game is so important, because I completely over the, like, the fact that I have a projectile, and it completely changes this game around. You could say it makes it a lot simpler. Another, but, like, if they do updates for this game, and I kind of unfortunately have the feeling that they won't, like, even if they just add something like an instruction thing to the mode, like, this just gives you options for your controls, but if it had, like, an option to, like, tell you like, you could customize it to have... Customize your game to, like, list the game controls. 
that'd be neat in its own right, too. Yeah, sorry to think of ideas for 2D platforms. There it is. <laughs> wow, the aliens are a lot more ruthless than I imagined them being. Just... Look, quick sight of me and BAM! I am just obliterated and gone, deceased, pushing up daisies, hit the farm. I'm sure. It's kind of... With the way that this stream's been going, uh, why not? There isn't too many people, there isn't so many people here that I'm getting overwhelmed with suggestions. So I can take, I can probably take one more. I thought I'd be like focusing a lot more between my game and like the builder part of it. But I'm having, just having a lot of fun just fiddling around with other people's games. I should have seen the stream going this way. I haven't quite. But I thought I could like resist the temptation and make it all about the games and not about the building. I tried. Alright. I'm not sure why this can fodder isn't dying. I really would appreciate it if it like go away. Pretty pleased with sugar on it, especially because I think I think these actually have to die in order for me to progress. Okay, no. Cool, they have power-ups. You can go to my account and find my games there. Well, once I finish this up, I'll take a look. Because I think I'll have to, like, dig out your game again and look up the creator code. I can do that. Oh, is that the end? Does it... I'm gonna count that as winning. Because I don't know if I actually hit the victory screen or I just barely got through it, but I'll play them. If I'm curious, I'll play through it again on my own time and look it up then. Alright. I mean, it shouldn't be too... Actually, when I think about it, I just gotta find the game and I think there's an option there that... Oop. I keep forgetting that you actually have to press X and not A. Go to this program of shared games. This game reminds me of the Foxy Fighter mini game from. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that series, so I'll just take your word on it. I'm. I'm gonna guess game. Oh, the shooter one. I'm guessing this is a shooter that kinda looks like something you would shoot. Something tells me- no, I'm kind of got feeling this is not the shooter. That's not the shooter! <laughs> oh, I'll try again. I don't know, I don't s I see game platformer, I see... Game platformer... I don't see a shooter, unless that's the shooter, and I just look- X and- <laughs> Yeah. Alright, I'll actually try to figure out how the control works. I mean, is this one of the ones you're talking about that... ...require buttons? Or... No, I guess I'm just supposed to appreciate... ...this, unless there's controls I'm overlooking. I mean, there's a little bit of audio delay because I have to put, when I'm doing ga console games, I have to push, I have to delay the game audio a little in order to, it to actually be, in order for my reaction to the game to be somewhat synced to the actual gameplay. Okay, game, game platformer 2. Yeah, I'll give this a shot, and I was thinking I want to, like, maybe I'm better off doing my own time, but I was thinking of, like, going into, like, the lessons a little bit, because I was just about to start the 2D platformer lesson, so. Ah, 
This is the one you're talking about. Yeah, it definitely fits the theme. Oh, it's a wall jump, isn't it? Of course it is. <laughs> huh. I like the death effect. It's something I overlooked. Oh, it's like a floor is lava thing. That's why I'm dying. For some reason I thought I was dying to the walls, but... It's the floor that's deadly, not the walls. I get that much now. Okay, before I rush into action... Let me make sure I'm not missing out on any control... Oh. There's the taunt until proven otherwise. That's my jump. Oh, there we go. I'm not sure how I didn't just break through that naturally. Like, I'm not sure what I did. Oh, I keep getting clipped on the top. That's why I can't just jump and go through there. The, maybe that was maybe the way I was doing it before was right, but it feels a little convoluted. So I'm kind of wondering if there's something I'm overlooking. I mean, whatever was happening wrong, I'm doing right now. I, I don't know why I thought that was collectible. Alright. Small jump things. It's kind of... I almost forget about the small jump sometimes. Now, I think... A small jump... I was tapping the button as little as I could. And I think I still got my head cut off on the corner with small jump even. From a distance I could definitely see it working. Unless you're talking about this area, which I mean, yeah, I, I, I kinda get that small jumping would be good for that area, but I find like clipping on the wall a little easier. Yeah, I mean the pencils are pointy, so it should have actually clicked. But I mean like half the fun of the game is just there's definitely a criticism. Half the fun of the game is figuring it out, I guess. Right. I see you got elephants in your soundtrack. So yeah, that's all I got right now when I'm just trying to focus and not die in silly ways. And that's the platformer. Nice. Um, let me see. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a little bit, so I was just checking to see how long it was live. It's been an hour with that, so I think I'm gonna go through one more game garage level from online, and then maybe I'll try the lesson and. I don't want this, as much as I'm enjoying just playing these random levels, I don't want the concept to overstay its levels, so maybe I'll, depending on how long we've been streaming after this, and how much longer I feel up to streaming, we might, I might be open to jumping over to a different game. I have a couple ideas of what we could go to. Oh hey, this looks like it'd be kind of neat. Pokemon Palette Town. This is either going to be incredibly underwhelming, or really neat. My lord, if they like made sprites for every individual tile like it kinda looks, I I gotta give them props for that alone. <laughs> we I mean, I'm not gonna fault it too much. And they even got collision detection for the houses. It's pretty cool. Do you have Mario Maker? I do have Mario Maker and Mario Maker 2. Okay, I kind of figured they wouldn't let you go on the, the, the grass, but... Is what it is. Can't read the signs. But it looks like, But I... Do you appreciate... I do appreciate the concept. Yeah, it is cool. That's exactly what I was trying to say. Like, they even got a little shadow effect with the sprites. 
and what it looks like is that we can probably open it up and confirm but it looks like they have like each individual tile here as a sprite and while you could probably like copy and paste some of them like the like the fence here there's a lot of others like the pieces of the house and the sign it just seems like there's a lot of detail yeah <laughs> and speaking of a lot of detail I wasn't wrong Like I said, Alberto, I kind of get, I kind of have ideas of what we could do. So I think what I'm gonna do, first and foremost, <laughs> HD. Oh, and thanks for the thanks for the follow, Brito. I'm I'm I have Twitch alerts, so I'm not sure why it didn't pop up. It should play like a little sound effect and have a cute little anthro for when people follow. But I didn't even you must have like snuck it. No, you just followed a few minutes ago. Oh, you know what it is? I didn't. I don't have my headphones on. I only have like headphones on for the television. Or for the video game. I didn't have my headphones on for the computer. Oh, sorry, I completely missed your follow. But thank you. So I was going to say, if, if I could find something to leave off a nice intermission screen, I'm going to go like refill my water and stuff like that. And we'll figure out what to jump to from there. Because... It played a sound effect, but it didn't play the sound effect, but it showed that I fouled. Okay, I'll I'll look on I'll look into that in my own time. I can think of some theories, but I'd be better off screen to try to figure out exactly what's up with that.